Kenneth Copeland, Manic Laughter Control. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. And there's another opportunity to learn from the behaviours of the narcissist Kenneth Copeland. At this time, he appears on another television show or filmed appearance where he's in front of a relatively small number of people who clearly want to be there. But this provides you with an opportunity to watch some video footage and to see the way that he asserts control over his audience in a rather interesting way. As I've explained elsewhere, this individual is a narcissist. Therefore, we are able to look at his behaviours through the narcissistic prism to interpret what he says and what he does against that backdrop of the pursuit of the prime aims. And here, we're going to look specifically at his interaction with his audience. First of all, let's have a look at the footage. Laughter is a deterrent to pain. Now he said at John Ho Johns Hopkins, John Hop, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> Hopkins University. They pr they have proven it, and they have people that lead in laughter. They lead in laughter. And they'll say, "I don't have anything to laugh about," and they'll say, "That that's all right. You just you just go ahead." That your, that your physical brain and body cannot tell the difference between a put-on laugh and a real belly laugh. Wow. It works. And like I said, a merry heart does good like a medicine. So the joy of the Lord is our strength. So how do we count it all joy? Well, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha. Ha, 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 ha. The Associated Press said that Joe Biden is president. Ha, 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 yeah, ha, ha, ha. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's going to be president. Mickey Mouse is going to be king. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have a good laugh? Did your brain detect the difference between a fake laugh and a belly laugh. Mr. Copeland tells us that laughter is a deterrent to pain, and eventually he manages to explain that Johns Hopkins University has undertaken a study and that they have people there that lead in laughter. And he tells those that are listening to him that the physical brain and body cannot tell fake laughter and a belly laugh, in effect, apart. He throws in a bit of uh, scripture, telling us that the joy of our Lord is our strength, and poses the question, I think he asks, so how do we count it all joy? I'm not really sure what that means. However, what he then does is he starts to exhibit a mock laugh, and it's intentional. This isn't the hollow, empty laugh that a narcissist will often use. If you want to understand more about the relationship between the narcissist and humour, I'd invite you to watch my video, Game for a Laugh, to the Narcissist and Humour. You'll find it eye-opening. But here, he's deliberately affecting a fake and hollow laugh. And he's doing so in order to assert control over his audience. It's likely that some of those people in the audience are known to him and therefore are non-intimate secondary sources, and the vast majority are non-intimate tertiary sources. They are appearing on his radar, therefore he must control them. It's comparatively easy for him to do so, 
because they are a favourable audience. They might have paid to listen to him, probably the case given his preoccupation with money, or they've been there at invitation and they're people that want to listen to what he has to say and are supporters of his. Therefore, his narcissism has an easy job of it, maintaining control over the audience by cracking some jokes and telling them what they want to hear with regard to scripture, etc. They make the appropriate noises in response. But what is interesting is that, viewed objectively, what he's talking about in the hollow laugh is actually rather ridiculous. But notice the behaviour of those individuals. They lap it all up and they're laughing along with him. He, of course, is getting what he wants. Control. Fuel. May well be some character traits in there, and, of course, residual benefit of facade management, and also in relation, quite possibly, to money, whether it's from those people's attendance or the broadcasting of this show, whatever it might be. So the prime aims are all being catered for for him. But it is the control that he asserts over the audience by basically behaving in a rather strange manner with this hollow laugh. Yet they all go along with it, laughing along with him, finding it amusing and entertaining. That shows the extent to which these individuals are putty in his hand, and it's little wonder that he's able to get people to donate sums of money to him to feather his not inconsiderable nest. It then jumps forward, whereby there is a joke made at the expense of Joe Biden. It's no secret that Kenneth Copeland is pro-Trump. And this results in him, of course, cracking a joke about the Associated Press saying that Joe Biden is president. This then prompts him to laugh. And this is meant to be his genuine laugh. It's hollow, but effective. It's manic in its nature, the way that he laughs about the media calling Biden's win. Uh, he engages in this manic laughter, which to anybody else would probably be rather perturbed by it, rather even repulsed by it. But no, not these individuals that are there lapping up all of what he has to say, and of course, his manic laughter. So taken in are they by him, so taken in are they under his control that they laugh hysterically along with him also. Now, of course, they may well have found the joke particularly funny because they may well be pro-Trump as well, or even if they're not particularly political, they saw that it was funny in the context of what he's talking about vis-a-vis -vis laughter. But the fact is, the nature of his laugh rings hollow, it's manic, and it doesn't really fit, notwithstanding that. That doesn't damage the control that he has over that audience. As the camera pans back, you can see some of them rocking backwards and forwards with mirth, laughing along, entertained by his manic laughter. And it demonstrates the extent to which certain individuals finding themselves absorbed into the coterie by which they can be controlled, even in circumstances where the narcissist behaviour is somewhat incongruous. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for watching.